قال تعالى إذا قضيت فيقال قضي على so, so Allah says إذا قضيت الصلاة when the prayer is done with when the prayer is done with Musa alayhi salam punched a guy and the guy died Allah says فقضى عليه he ended his story قضى عليه same word was used right so قضى is used for judgment but it also means the final end of something so I, if only death could have been the end of it you know if only YOLO was true he gets up and says no 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 I don't, I don't want to be alive I don't, no 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 I don't want this by the way people that are living people that are living what's the most important thing for them staying alive that's the most important thing this same guy who lived for this life is resurrected and the most the biggest wish he had is what staying dead staying dead just look at the irony of this that was the end of my, my story if only I wasn't resurrected after it and I, I, I wish I never had to come into contact with all these things that I've done before said, this person is now wishing for death and while they were alive nothing was more hated to them than death. وَشَرٌ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ مَا يُطْلَبُ لَهُ الْمَوْتِ And the only thing that make, will make you wish for death is something that is worse than death. Right? So the fact that they're alive, they know what's coming now is far worse than death. That humiliation is worse than death and then what's coming next is far, far, far worse than death. In other words, other places in the Quran, when this person is handed their book in their left hand, you know what they say? They say, دَعَا هُنَالِكَ ثُبُورًا at that very moment, they will say, Thubur, immediate death, please. Just just do it. Please, just end me. Allah says, لا تدعو اليوم ثبورا. No, 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 no. Don't, don't call for death today. وَدْعُوا ثُبُورًا كثيرا. Keep calling for death. Lots of them. Allah says another place, in a, in, ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا He doesn't get to die there. He doesn't get to live there. You can't even call it life. But you don't get to call it death. Death would be too easy of a term for this. And life would be too merciful of a word for this. So it's not life and it's not death. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us. Wasani, the second meaning of it. So the first meaning was death in this life, right? If only it was decisive, if only death in this life was decisive. Okay. Wasani annahu aaidun ila al halati allati shahadaha inda mutala'at al kitab. Wal ma'na ya layta hadihi al hala kanat al mauta allati. قضت علي لأنه رأى تلك الحالة أبشع وأمر مما ذاقه من مرارة مرارة الموت وشدته فتمناه عندها. So the second meaning is he realizes as humiliating as this is, as humiliating as the reading of the book is, something much worse is coming. And so can this be it? Can this reading of the book and this being handed? Can this be okay? Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, I was bad. I'm humiliated. I learned my lesson. Can we just stop now? So he wants the the first death was one interpreted. The other is can can we just end it now? Can I die now though? Okay, no, I, I got it. I was really bad. And then end it? No, no, no. That's Qatada's statement. I wrote that for you already. Okay. Uh, by the way, Qad Qad also Qadi also means uh Iqda also means termination and Qada also means uh Qad also means deadly poison. So like death by poison is actually also Qad. Anyway, if death is the end, you lead a very different life. We talked about that, alhamdulillah. Okay. Ma aghna anni Okay. His, his cry has not been completed in the Quran. Allah wants us to hear multiple cries of this person. They're not in hell yet. They're in judgment day with the book in their hand and these are the things they're saying. I wish I didn't get my book. Then, I wish that was the death. Death was the final death. This, I wish it didn't happen. Now, the third thing they're saying is, "Ma aghna anni maliya." My money never made me independent from this problem. It never solved this problem. This is an indication that this was a person that was wealthy. You remember the Quran? I was telling you the early Quran was coming after the elite of Mecca, that were the primary opposition of the Prophet ﷺ. <laughs> and they were throwing money at the problem too. Didn't they try to bribe the Prophet too, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Right? The elite of five paid uh, hoodlums in the street money to stone the Prophet, Alayhi Wasallam. 
when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing da'wah in the marketplace, they paid women money to start a concert and start singing and dancing so they would get attention, right? They were throwing money at this problem all the time. And then didn't they gather so much money to build up the army to annihilate the Muslims once and for all, right? They used their money as a resource to annihilate Islam. That was part of their budget, you know? This was part of their national security budget to, to eliminate this religion. So now, and of course, even if you're not talking about one's opposition to Islam, there's another component to this. And that is there are people who live this hedonistic life, this life of, you know, pleasure is everything. And in their mind, so long as you have money, you get whatever you want. You can just, you know, what problem can't money solve? A legal problem? I'll get the best lawyer. Okay, if, it's, if the lawyer's not enough, I'll, I'll buy the judge. Say, so what's, what's the problem? What's the problem? Okay, that's not working? Okay, I'll get citizenship in a country where I have immunity. Oh, they're not giving me immunity? Okay, I'll buy the prime minister. Right? Money can solve any problem. Every problem. Okay? And there are places in the world, I was just talking to somebody, I won't name the country because I don't want to diss countries. But there are countries in the world where if you have a problem with somebody, they keep coming out like the, the daughter keeps coming after her share of the inheritance or whatever. It costs the equivalent of $300 to get her killed. 300 bucks, somebody will kill her for you. Just drive by on a motorcycle. Problem solved. Now I don't have to share the inheritance. Cheap solution. Now I get to keep the entire farm. Right? So this, this idea of money can solve any problem. They were used to that. They were used to that. And by the way, with money, when you have that kind of money, you have lots of employees, you have lots of people under the table you're paying, right? You're, you're, you're bribing cops or you're bribing certain people or you're a, you're, you, you've paid certain politicians enormous amounts of sums, sums for their political campaigns so they're in your pocket too. We're seeing some of that nowadays, aren't we? Right? Where some of that's now emerging, it's coming before our eyes, right? How much lobbyists are paid, you know? And, or how much money lobbyists pay, in fact. Uh, so this... This entire mechanism was there because they never want to face accountability. They can't be brought to trial. They own the court. They own the court. They can't be brought to trial. They own the system. So you could do whatever you want. They're going to get away with it because what is in their control? Money. Money. And it's interesting that Allah mentioned money here before he mentioned power. You would think he would mention power first and he would mention money. Second, he mentions money first and power second as if Allah is commenting on something. Economic power is the driving force behind political power. We think, in our simplistic worldview, that political power is real power. So if you have the, if you have the government, if you're the president, the prime minister, if you have the, the, the majority in Congress, then you have power. But actually, it's the people that are funding you behind the scenes and the people that are owning majorities of the, the majority of the assets of the nation it's the people that are run, driving the major businesses, the major employers, the people that are controlling the finances. How much more powerful are banks than the federal government? The Federal Reserve in this country is a private agency. It's called federal, but it's not government. It's a private company, right? And how powerful is it? It's probably the most powerful entity, financial entity on the planet, right? And how much does that control everything? The, the amount of gas, the, what you're paying for gas, where we're gonna go to war, where, what, what, what genocide will be stop and what genocide will we not stop? All of that's coming from financial decisions. These are financial calculations made by people at the very top. The Quraysh people think were in love with their political power. The political power was a facade. The real thing they had was an economic power. They, they had that. And the reason Abraha, you remember the story of Abraha and the elephants and all that? The reason Abraha wanted to destroy the Kaaba is not because he was interested in building his own Kaaba, because he wanted the religion to change. If he built an alternative to the Kaaba, then that would become the business capital. People would come there and they would stop by and that would grow the economy, right? So money being the kind of the, 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 the blood that courses through the veins of the powerful, right? That's the, that's the imagery that this person is describing. I have all this, I had all this money None of it was able to solve this problem. And by the way, these people, do they ever solve their own problem? They pay somebody to solve the problem. Don't I pay you enough? Take care of it. I don't want to hear about it. Right? But now, first of all, they got no money left. They get up naked like the rest of humanity. 
they got a bare bone like the rest of us, standing there by themselves, exposed completely, no protection from anywhere, right? So inni ayyakulu thalika man kana tha malin wa sultan. This is going to be the words of someone who had enormous amounts of wealth, who lived thinking about their wealth as their, an extension of themselves, had a great power. وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ الْفَرِيقِ مِنْ جَمِيعِ أَهْلِ الْإِشْرَاكِ وَالْكُفْرِ And that's the group, the elite group, uh, 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 from out of the entire body of people of shirk and kufr. فَمَا ظَنُّكَ بِحَسْرَةِ مَنِ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ وَاقْتَذُوا بِهِمْ إِذَا رَأَوْهُمْ كَذَلِكَ So if this is the elite, and they're standing there saying, my money didn't do any good. Then all the stupid people who followed them and did the same thing, who didn't have the money, they're going to be like, yo, they, they're not safe? Oh. Because we, we knew, even when, when things go bad, we know some people are going to survive. Right? They're going to get on a rocket ship to space. Right? They're going to know. There's some people will know before the market crashes, they'll pull all their stocks out of the market. They're going to know. They're gonna know when to do this, what, when to dump, when to when to get out of the country before the bombs start dropping. They'll know a day before. They'll know two days before. These people are the first in line to get in trouble. Oh, there's no okay. There's no and some people had their hopes. So long as they're okay, we're gonna be okay, right? So Allah took the 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 the, the king off of the chessboard first. Subhanallah. Wa fi hada ta'aridun bisadati mushriki al Arab, and this is a direct shot taken at the leaders of the mushrikun of arabia مثل ابي جهل وامي بن خلف قال تعالى اذرني والمكذبين اول النعمه like allah says in other places in the quran let me deal with the, all the people who call you a liar particularly those that are blessed with more let me deal with them myself right allah says it's almost like the, allah is telling the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam don't worry about giving dawah to them step aside i'll deal with them myself that's how allah speaks about these people so uh, ghina actually in Arabic comes from the lack of need. Uh, that, that's actually, uh, and Mahani are high elevated places that are above sea level or above ground level. So if there's a storm or flood or anything, the, the one place that will survive no matter what will be the Mahani. They'll be, they, they'll be higher up, right? So that's kind of where the, the origin of the uh, word comes from. وَفِي أَغْنَى عَنِّي الْجِنَاسُ الْخَطِّي وَلَوْ مَعَ اخْتِلَافٍ قَلِيلٍ This is similar to a, an expression in Arabic. They say, غَرَّكَ عِزُّكَ فَصَارَ قُصَارَ ذَلِكَ ذَلِكَ ذُلُّكَ They say, your status deceived you. Your status uh, conned you. You got, you got deluded by your status. And when that status was removed, that became your humiliation. So the reality emerged. أي ما أغنى عني شيئا الذي كان لي في الدنيا من المال ونحبه كالاتباع على أن ما في ما so so this is the other nothing benefited me there are two readings of ما the, the ما أغنى عني مالية can be read is one reading I told you but this ما نافية is my money did not benefit me at all not me didn't benefit me and the عنيز brought first as if he's still obsessed with himself <laughs> my money didn't help me you know what about my money that's, that's one. But the other is my istifhamiyah, which means, what good was my money? Didn't even help me. Like he's asking a, an angry question. The my istifhamiyah is a question form, right? What good was it? Oh my God, all that money I had. What happened? And there's this shock expressed in, in this phrasing. Halaka adni sultania. This is, uh, actually, I'll read that to you later. That was uh, Hamiduddin Farahi, actually. Oh, my team added more notes than I first told them. Okay, this is my notes. Okay. So, let me tell you a little bit about Sultan. Sultan in Arabic means argument. One, mean, one meaning of it is argument. It originally actually comes from power. So, salata to overpower someone. Okay. A Sultan is uh, the king also. In Arabic, you may have heard. Sultan is the king also. Uh, the reason he's called the king is because his argument is final. They don't argue back with him. It's the, the final argument is his. The final verdict is his. So Sultan is a powerful argument which cannot be rebuttaled. Right? That's why the word Sultan is used for power. It's also used for decisive uh, argument, decisive evidence, concluded, like case closed kind of evidence. Right? So uh, in the Quran, for example, uh, you know, people who believe in shirk, they have no Sultan for what they believe. That doesn't mean they don't have a king for what they believe. It means they have no decisive argument for what they believe, right? 
Allah revealed no sultan for this. They're only following their assumptions. But here, the word sultan can mean two things. It can mean all the arguments I used to make to, dis to, to dismiss this religion. All of them have died. All of them disappeared. By the way, what were the arguments? We'll see them in this surah. Oh, he's just a poet. Oh, he's just an entertainer. Just because he sings some songs, they rhyme. You heard the Quran, it rhymes. It's just, it's all it is. Oh, he's a kahin. He's just a mind reader. Just, you, I mean, you, you, you haven't seen these people before? They're all over the place. I've seen them. I've been around town. This is not my first rodeo. Take it from me. I didn't get rich being stupid. I'm smart. I know. I'm telling you, this is a kahin. These were their arguments. My arguments have disappeared. The other thing this means is my power has disappeared. By the way, now power, if power or my authority has disappeared, if that's being mentioned second, what was behind it? Money. My money didn't benefit me, as if to say, and my power has disappeared as a result. As a result. Guards. Or he'd whistle and they'd come running. Right? Get me some clothes. You know? Get me some water, it's hot here. I need to play I need a place to sit. You know? Why am I around all these other people? None of that's working. I have no authority left. That's so Mulki Tasaluti Nas My power is gone. My co my governance over people is gone. And I'm now just a beggar? I'm just humiliated? Well so I batalat hujati alati kuntu ahta jubiha fit dunya. And Ibn Abbas interpreted this way, Mujahid, Bahak, Ikrima said the arguments I used to make, all of them have now been vanished into thin air. So the word the word halaka, which is used for uh, death, is actually also used for disappearance or something no longer existing. So you know, ahlaktu mal al lubada, another ayah in the Quran, ahlaktu mal al lubada, I destroyed so much money, which means I made so much money vanish, like I blow a lot of money. Right, that's the expression for it in the Quran. وَتَصَلُّتِ عَلَى الْقُوَى وَالْأَلَاتِ الَّتِي خُلِقَتْ لِي فَعَجَزْتُ عَنْ إِسْتِعْمَالِهَا فِي الطَّاعَاتِ All the powers I used to have, all the tools and devices that I bought that can help me for what, any need that I have, all of them, I've become, I've been rendered incapable of using any of them. يَقُولُ ذَلِكَ تَحَسُّرًا وَتَأَسُّفًا He will say this out of great grief and out of great sadness. Uh, I want to take this commentary and add something for our benefit how is power defined nowadays power is economic of course i mentioned that power is political that's also true uh, there's also psychological power some people exert control without lifting a finger right uh, and they can they can make you do things you don't want to do just because of the way they look at you some people are don't look at them right now they're probably looking at you right now telling you with their look not to look at them Right? So there's, there's psychologically manipulative people that can exert a great deal of control. They can do that. There are people that can do that with their words. They have sultan just using their words. They can do th th Those words can have the effect of instilling fear in you, but also instilling guilt in you, instilling anxiety in you, instilling shame in you. Some people use shame as a weapon. Some people use guilt as a weapon. Some people use fear and intim intimidation as a weapon. There are multiple weapons at people's disposal for sultan. For Sultan. Some people use their social position as a weapon. Right? Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a PhD. It's gonna be so you know what you're talking about? I know what I'm talking about. That's being used as a weapon. Some people use their credentials, maybe their professional credentials, maybe their academic credentials, maybe their place, their rank in the family. I'm the father, I'm the older brother, I'm the this, I'm the that. Depending on whatever you are, you're gonna use that as a position of power to wedge and to enforce some kind of wrongdoing, right? Or, I'm the provider, what are you gonna say? I'm the one that pays the bills, shut up, right? So pe people, it's not just people in elite positions that have sultan. Every human being has been given some degree of autonomy and also given some degree of power. We have some degree of power. And this person is on that day de declaring how all of that power that they had in any capacity over anyone else, in fact, even over their own bodies, has now been eliminated. All of it's gone. Okay? أَمَا وَاللَّهِ مَا كُلُّ مَنْ دَخَلَ النَّارِ كَانَ أَمِيرَ قَرِيَةً Abdu ibn Humayd, he says, 
you should know, I swear to God, not everybody who goes to, to the hellfire is the, is the prince of a, t a city or is the head of a, a village. لكن الله تعالى خلقهم However, Allah created all of them وسلطهم على أبدانهم and gave them power over their bodies وأمرهم بطاعته وناههم عن معصيته But He did give them power over their bodies and commanded them to obey Him and forbade them from disobeying Him. The concept of tadmeen is important here. Uh, I'm going to give you a silly example to help you understand it that will take our break, okay? Tadmeen is something that occurs enough times in the Quran that you should become familiar with it. Um, some English commentaries of the Quran also use the word tadmeen in their commentaries and you're like, what does this tad mean? What, what's that talking about? Let me help you out. In English, I'm going to use English to explain this to you. In English, some verbs have prepositions, right? So you, you don't say, I gave arguing, you say, I gave up arguing. So now the word quit, the equivalent of that is, the, a synonym for that is gave up, right? Which is made up of a verb and a preposition. Gave up, right? Here's another, another word. He abstained from arguing. What's the preposition here? Yeah, from. So you don't say he abstained up arguing or he abstained to arguing or he abstained of arguing. They're particular prepositions for particular verbs, for particular meanings, right? They, they interact with each other and create a certain meaning, right? So, gave goes with up, and abstained goes with from. What the Arabs used to do is they'd say, he abstained up arguing. So, they take the verb from one and the preposition from the other, and the listener was sharp enough to say, I see what you did there. You're trying to tell me he gave up arguing, or he abstained from arguing and gave it up entirely. You're telling me both. Just because you used the verb from A and the preposition from B. Pretty cool, huh? We don't do that in English. You could try it, you'll sound stupid. But, okay, I ask you to ex abstain up it. But, but the idea behind it is two meanings fused together as one. Right? Halaka doesn't actually come with an. So the verb is halaka and the preposition is an. Actually, halaka sultani. And it would be minni. It would not be anni, it would be minni. But Allah used anni. Halaka anni sultania. So this would be an example of tadmin, which means the verb is halaka, but the preposition is coming from some other verb. Right? So then the scholars started thinking, what is this other verb? And one verb they just they described is ghaba, and the other is lam yadfa. So they say, uh, the you know, my my authority disappeared. At the same time, my 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 authority you know has died. Halaka, it died. My authority has disappeared, and my authority refused to defend me. My authority is no longer defending me. All of those meanings got included because what preposition was being used? An. And this happens on a number of occasions in the Quran. In most translations of the Quran, tadmin is not respected, so they just go with the verb and kind of ignore the preposition. I say, okay, it's not the normal preposition, but. And then this is kind of strange because they, they got to do like a one-liner translation so they don't really uh, pay too much attention to it. So we'll, we'll come back inshallah and continue from ayah number 30. Barakallahu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.